I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us. You know, we hear a lot of conversation about ransomware right now, and we talk a lot about tape and its role in that process. It pre pre creates an ideal air gap uh, between the, the attack and your data. So we're going to talk about that today. Joining me on the whiteboard to discuss it is David Baukart. He is with Carbon Black. David, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So before we get into the, the subject at hand, why don't you give us a little bit of background on yourself and what you guys do? Sure, uh, my background is actually in uh, penetration testing, incident response, and digital forensics, actually. Uh, at Carbon Black, they specialize in, in, in uh, incident response and the digital signature of all the attacks happening on the endpoint. Okay, so you're the right guy to talk to. So, so let's talk a little bit about, um, you, know, you hear this term air gap, and I'm not sure 100% of the time people know what we're talking about there. Can you kind of draw what we mean by that? Um, sure, from, just from a network standpoint. So if I have a, uh, a PC, I have, it's connected to a network somewhere, uh, and then I have a whole another PC over here, there's no physical connection going anywhere from PC to PC or right. from network to network. Gotcha. Versus, you know, let's say down here I have my uh, tape library down here hooked up to my backup server. Right. There's no connection over here. This might have an out-of-band connection pulling the data, but there's no other physical connection. It's totally separated. Gotcha. So that means if I get a ransomware attack uh, hit in this system and, and maybe even that system, it can't get to my tape library? Right, it's not going to cross the network, right? Right. Uh, the only way it's going to cross the network, and there is air gap attacks out there. Uh, I mean, we can look back at some APTs like Stuxnet was an air gap attack, which was carried by a USB drive that was plugged in. Okay. That would be bad news, right? Sure. So that's where policies have to be to make sure this is very, very isolated. Uh, no one's allowed to put USB drives in and stuff like that, so you can't cross that air gap. Okay, so then once I detect that there's a, uh, an attack, right, it's going to do something like crawl my, in ransomware in particular, it's going to crawl my uh, every file system it can get to, it's going to start encrypting data, it's going to introduce me to this little thing called Bitcoin, all that stuff's going to happen. Um, but what you're saying is it's kind of hard for it to get to the tape library, right? Yeah, if it doesn't have a, uh, a connection via the network anywhere, it can't get anywhere. It's right. going to be isolated to that. I mean, most of your uh, crypto type ransomwares, I mean, there's multiple different variants, right? You have ones that will go after crypto, some that just want to wipe out all your stuff. They encrypt it, but they don't have a key. Right. Uh, but we don't see that so much. We see the ones, they want They want the money. They want their $200 or $300, sure. whatever Capitalism they want. Capitalism lives, right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but if, if they're searching the network, they're going to search whatever PC they get on, they're going to search the network connection, the local drive, kill that first, and, st and keep spreading itself. Uh, but again, if you've got that air gap where you've got nothing coming over here to your storage and your backup mechanisms, it can't get to it, so right. you're, you're isolated. And, and I think this becomes increasingly important, and, and maybe you guys have seen this as well. We've seen a, a few attacks over this year, especially where they're going after specific backup repositories. You know, unbeknownst to me, I, I didn't know this, I have a friend of mine who's kind of an expert at one of the products, and it, it always stores its backup repository in the exact same folder structure. So it wasn't hard for the ransomware guys to say, well, I'm always going to look for this folder structure and attack it. Are you guys seeing stuff like that as well? Um, yeah, I'm seeing that as a researcher myself out in the field. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm seeing that. We're also seeing variants of ransomware out there that will kill the like local snapshots on a Windows PC. Yeah. It's going to kill those shadow volume copies and stuff right. like that. Uh, you've got to think outside that realm. Think of the, make sure that this is just a commodity piece that the storage data is stored off on a NAS or a SAN somewhere, but then you look at some ransomware that, hey, I'm going to attack your NAS. I want to go look for that network attached right. storage. Uh, usually that's going to be isolated to what access the PC, wherever it starts from. Right. Uh, again, if I'm backing that stuff up out of band, offline, away from it, multiple copies, that's the key thing. So not only do I have to back up my tape library, but I need to export that out to another storage, right? right. Uh, where I can keep it, generally off-site. And, and the more hops we have here, the harder it gets for ransomware to get all the way through the environment, yes. I guess, right? And, and, I, and by the way, that if you have a great snapshot and didn't get attacked, clearly you're going to recover from your snapshot, right? But right. what you want is a series of fail-safes that if and this goes bad, the, day, the worse your day gets, you want to make sure you have something like tape at the end to make sure you can get out of it. Exactly, right? you got to build a comeback. 
Exactly. Sure. So let's, let's one last subject that, it, that was uh, come up uh, recently is this concept of attack loops, where the the product sits I, the product the malware sits idle for a little bit, and then uh, it it makes its way onto a few tapes. It, it, does tape still have a role in that situation? Uh, sure, it does because you can look at getting your data back. So maybe you might not get your data back. You might look at the first month it's the malware still there. Second month, it might still be there. Hey, let's look at third month. Hey, it's not there. Now we can start restoring our data. Right. Uh, and you've got to start from some starting point. If you have no starting point, you're still dead in the water. Well, and I think the other important thing for me is it can't execute on the library, right? So it's still isolated there. Exactly. So if I can even extract the malware during the recovery effort, I could be safe too, right? That is uh, definitely one way. Uh, and I'm a strong proponent, as we're doing the restore, yeah. you've got to be scanning that, the, ba the restore. Yeah. Uh, there's definitely a lot of people that don't scan, their, they just blindly, oh, we're going to rebuild the server, yeah. we're going to restore our data and never scan it. Yeah. Or they wait till it's all installed, then they scan it again, and a lot of times that's just Yeah, I th and I think that's not uh, no longer a media issue, that's really going to be we need to put pressure on backup software vendors and archive vendors to scan data in and out as it exactly. happens, right? Exactly, have those API plugins so your malware, anti-malware vendors or next generation malware vendors can actually tie into that and have real time scanning of that stuff. Awesome, well David, thanks for joining us today. Thanks very much. So there you have it, you know, uh, tape makes an ideal uh, air gap and gives you that time cushion against attacks like ransomware. So. Uh, this could be the, the single best uh, justification for reinvesting in tape. Thanks for joining us. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland.